Hi everyone, this is Courtney from Paris Unlocked, one of the best free sources out there for travel tips and cultural facts on France and its marvelous capital city. So today I'll be going over some of the basic rules and customs of French etiquette, including things like polite greetings in French, how to navigate certain social interactions, how to behave at a French table, and much more. Think of it as a French etiquette 101 course that answers some of your most burning questions about how to get by like a native. Make sure to listen through to the end so you can benefit from all our expert tips, and please like and share this video if you find it helpful. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel to get all the latest videos on Paris and France. We'll be covering everything from travel tips and trip planning basics to French history, food, and culture. Welcome, and let's get etiquetting! Okay, so I'll start by saying that if you do a basic web search on the rules of French etiquette, this can send you down a rabbit hole of forum posts on places like TripAdvisor or Reddit. And these are posts with topic headings that might say things like, why are the French so friggin' mean? Or why are Parisians such a-holes? I actually did find ones that were similar to those recently, if you can believe it. It's also true that many people get really anxious about setting foot on Paris or elsewhere in France. And this is pretty understandable when you think about the constant stream of TV shows, movies, and self-help books on supposed French womanhood that all depict the culture as one that's, well, snobby and rude according to the stereotypes. So you might be asking yourself, how do I avoid the famous Parisian sigh or the side-eye or their tendency to correct visitors for their cultural or linguistic mistakes? And is there any way to master the basics of French etiquette without spending months living in the country first? Can I avoid feeling utterly humiliated and clueless after most interactions with French people? Can I escape the cringeworthy fate of characters such as the now famous Emily in Paris, who embarrasses herself at every turn with bad French and cultural faux pas? Keep watching to the end of this video as I count down a few of the top myths and realities about French etiquette rules. Stay tuned! I'd like to start by saying that I really don't recommend relying on TV and movies to give you an accurate picture about what French culture is like. These tend to exaggerate everything into predictable stereotypes, and they can be fun, sure, but they don't do much to help us really understand a culture in all its complexity and nuances. And you should also know that many of the old cliches about France and French culture don't apply much anymore if they once held a grain of truth. The fact is, younger generations of French people generally speak some English confidently and tend to be more relaxed about the old etiquette rules. But this doesn't mean you should just ignore these rules, hence the need for this video. Service culture has become more friendly in many places in France in recent years, in my experience and the experiences of many others. In places like Paris, the local government and tourism board literally undertook an ambitious plan to make the city friendlier and less intimidating to visitors starting in 2013. And from what I and some of my friends and colleagues have seen since then, the campaign seems to be working, at least partly. I find the atmosphere in Paris, and also elsewhere in France, to be somewhat friendlier to tourists these days, especially compared to when I first moved to France all the way back in 2001. Of course, some people would disagree with me, as videos such as the one that went viral on TikTok from the food blogger Real PhD Foodie attest. Sadly, some will continue to have unpleasant experiences in France, and I'm always really sorry to hear about these, as everyone deserves kindness and respect. But this doesn't mean all French people are rude and unkind, or that you should skip France as a destination entirely just because somebody has a report of a bad experience. That would be, I think, a too narrow way to look at it all, and deprive you of the fun of exploring a really interesting and wonderful culture. So, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, it's a good idea to sort through the realities and myths of the sort of etiquette rules you might be expected to follow as a visitor in France. My hope is that this will allow you to relax during your stay and feel more confident interacting with people in a variety of different situations. Okay, so my number one French etiquette tip for new travelers in particular is to always greet people in a way that they consider to be polite. That's a real shocker, right? The fact is that France remains a relatively formal culture even when you compare it to neighboring European countries. So for example, in Spain, it's now become the norm for servers and restaurants to greet you and ask for your food or drink order by saying, digame, which literally means, tell me, and can feel a bit brusque at times, to be honest. But in France, it would be very unusual for French servers, even in casual bars or restaurants, to not open an exchange with a diner with bonjour. In more formal places, it's more likely to be bonjour madame or bonjour monsieur. Of course, it's becoming more common among young French people, especially Gen Zers out there, to ditch the madame or monsieur or mademoiselle altogether, because they often find such rigidly gendered greetings pretty passé and unnecessary. And I'm starting to tend to agree with them. 
Nevertheless, it's still really important to start every single interaction you have with bonjour. This is true whether you're asking for directions, ordering a coffee or meal, asking to see an item in a store, or checking into a hotel. This is just your basic, polite way to greet people. Now you should know that in the evenings, so after around 5 o'clock p.m., most French people will instead say bonsoir, which means good evening. But don't worry, if you forget and say bonjour instead after 5 p.m., it's really not a big deal. The person might respond with bonsoir instead, but this is usually in a friendly way and not a sarcastic way, although there are exceptions. Here's an extra tip for you. If the person or group you're communicating with look to be over 50 or so, that is aged 50 or over, I strongly recommend greeting a woman with bonjour madame and a man with bonjour monsieur. You're likely to get a much warmer response if you do because older generations still tend to want to use these more formal greetings. I don't really recommend using mademoiselle these days though. It's not as popular with young women as it once was and it's risky because you don't know whether someone will be potentially offended if you use it. Mademoiselle typically being used to refer to a young unmarried woman. So that makes a lot of presumptions about a per person's age, marital status, etc. And it's better to just not use mademoiselle anymore in my humble opinion. Also, please remember to say merci and s'il vous plaît when ordering or requesting any sort of service or assistance. S'il vous plaît and merci or merci beaucoup go a long way in France. Not saying please or thank you makes you look rude to a French person. Just remember that. Okay, next up we're gonna address the French custom of la bise, kissing on the cheeks, or giving air kisses as many people are want to do rather than actual kisses on the cheeks. Now this is another common source of anxiety among tourists and visitors to France, but I think it's really one you can mostly relax about. This is because you only really need to worry about this one if you meet up with friends, family members, or are introduced to them by others they know well. And outside of intimate settings like dinner parties, receptions, and sometimes business meetings, strangers don't generally exchange la bise. So how do you know when it's appropriate to offer la bise? If in doubt, I'd wait for the other person to lead the way. Some people may extend their hand to invite you to shake it, while others may come right in for la bise without asking you. In Paris, this is generally one small kiss on both cheeks, or in the air, touching cheeks and pretending to kiss. In some regions of France, it's three, even four. That's typical in the south of France and certain other regions. And as mentioned earlier, some touch cheeks but kiss the air. So it's not always going to be planting a kiss on someone's cheek. Again, you have to kind of follow the lead and see what the other person goes in to do. So what about two men who meet in a social setting? Well, men sometimes shake hands with other men or exchange des bises. It depends on the social context, level of closeness, and personal preferences, really. Like I said, most travelers won't have to worry about navigating these subtleties, though. If you do end up at a private dinner party or other event where la bise may be in play, wait for others to initiate, like I said. Someone you've just been introduced to might even approach you with a smile and ask, on fait la bise? Which means, shall we exchange cheek kisses? I think it's important to note here that this custom is not considered even remotely flirtatious or sexual although you may still feel uncomfortable with it. Remember that you always have the right to politely refuse, even if it may lead to a bit of awkwardness. If you feel uncomfortable exchanging la bise with somebody who offers it, simply extend your hand instead and smile warmly as you shake hands. But I do have a small warning here. I'd always avoid big flashy smiles with your teeth, both in this context and any social context in France. French people often interpret these sorts of big, teethy smiles as grotesque and borderline aggressive outside of the context of genuine laughter or amusement. It's definitely something I'd steer away from. So now let's move on to one of the topics that I presume is on a lot of your minds. How to not seem like a clueless person while eating at a restaurant or perhaps a formal dinner party in France. So as long as you keep these basic rules in mind when eating out in France or dining in any private setting, you'll be fine. These basic rules apply to sit-down meals rather than casual settings such as fast food restaurants or enjoying street food on a park bench. Those settings are more casual and you don't really need to worry about these etiquette rules in those more casual contexts. Remember that obvious things like don't eat with your mouth open and don't start eating before your fellow diners arrive or start eating should always be respected as they should be pretty much anywhere else. Okay, so let's start with the beginning of the meal. Here's how to start your adventure at any French table. 
First, put your napkin in your lap only when you're ready to begin eating. Do not put the napkin in your lap before it's time to eat. If you're dining in a private setting or if you've been invited to eat at a restaurant by someone, wait for the host to begin eating or even to invite you to begin. They'll often say bon appetit, which means enjoy your meal, as a signal that everyone can start eating. If you feel comfortable doing so, you can wish them the same, but this certainly isn't an obligation. Next up, keep those hands on the table. Another basic tip I can share about table etiquette in France is one that some of you may find surprising or even a bit odd. It's considered impolite in France to place your hands under the table during a meal. Throughout the meal, try to keep your hands visible on the table without placing your elbows and whole arms onto it. The idea is to place your wrists and forearms at the edge of the table between bites and courses and throughout the meal. No one can say for certain where this custom comes from, but make sure to follow it when dining out in France. Otherwise, you might look a bit clueless, or at least make yourself obvious as someone who's unfamiliar with the rules of polite dining. Okay, now moving on to toasts and wine etiquette. When it comes to wine, a whole etiquette lesson could no doubt be built around it, but here are just the basics. First, if you're at a private dinner, make sure to only take sips from your wine glass following a proper toast, which is often initiated by your host. In France, it's considered impolite to begin drinking before a toast is made. Obviously, this doesn't apply to restaurants, where you can start drinking your wine whenever you'd like, although it is considered a bit gauche in France to begin drinking wine before food has arrived. During a toast, look the person in the eye when raising your glass to them and toasting, and say, Santé, which means to your health. And if you're the object of the toast, remember to never drink to yourself. This is considered a bit impolite, to say the least. Next up, rein in your kids. For those of you traveling with your kids, especially toddlers to about 10 year olds, be aware that it's really not looked kindly on in France when parents quote unquote let their kids run around a restaurant, especially if they disturb other diners. Believe me, I understand the dilemma as someone with a toddler myself. Toddler is gonna toddle, right? I have had to find some tricks to avoid breaking out into a cold sweat when eating out with my daughter in France. I especially try to find places that have ample booth seating since it's easier to keep a toddler from running around when they can play or even stand up, without shoes of course, on a comfortable booth. I also look for restaurants that advertise themselves specifically as family friendly, though even in these places you should know that kids are typically expected to stay at or around their own table. No running and screaming around other people's tables, you get the drift. I know this is a challenge and it's not something you can easily control, but I did want to warn parents that this is a cultural expectation in France and it's something you may need to navigate if you do bring your little ones to Paris or elsewhere in France. Okay, let's move on to the pressing question of how to properly eat bread on any trip to France. After all, eating bread is practically a national sport in France, right? If bread is served before the meal itself, please don't gobble down everything in the bread basket, however hungry you may be. Save some for the meal to come, especially since most restaurants won't refill it without charging extra. It's also important to note that free refills are generally not a thing in France, whether it comes to bread, coffee, or soft drinks. Don't go expecting free refills, you're almost never going to get them. Okay. One of the biggest tips about eating bread properly in France, do not butter a whole roll or slice of bread. It's generally considered rude to butter a whole piece of bread. Instead, what you'll need to do is put some butter on your own little plate, tear off pieces of a slice or roll of bread, and butter one chunk at a time. Also, in some places in France, it's also considered a bit gauche to place bread straight on your dinner plate. So the solution is to either use a separate bread plate if the restaurant or host provides one, or to simply put it on the tablecloth or table next to your plate. This may seem weird or counterintuitive to do so, I know, but this is better than putting it on your plate. Bit strange, but it's one of the things that is typical to see in France. Okay, let's move on to the main course at a typical French meal. Whether you have one course or six during your meal, it's important to take your time and allow plenty of space for conversation. Eat slowly and enjoy the ride. Please don't pester the servers or ask how long it'll take for the next course to get to the table. What you have to know is that in French restaurants, things generally take a bit more time than you might be used to, and the idea is to allow for digestion and conversation between courses. Okay, next tip, never, and I mean never, yell out garçon to gain a server's attention, unless your goal is to irritate or even offend them. The correct way to flag a server down is excusez-moi, which means excuse me, 
While eating, it's traditional to hold the knife in the right hand and the fork in the left and keep them there at all times, but I really wouldn't worry too much if you're not used to this. While some etiquette experts tell visitors to follow the European way of using silverware or cutlery, the reality is that France isn't such a snobby place that waiters and fellow diners will stare you down or shame you in some way if you do things a bit differently at home and don't want to change how you eat with your cutlery. That said, there's one trick that's essential for letting your server or host know that you're done with a particular course. Place the knife and fork with the tines facing up and parallel to each other on the right side of the plate. This will signal that you have finished your meal and let the server or host know that the plate can be taken away. The server may also come by and ask, c'est terminé, which means, have you finished? The polite way to respond if you are indeed done eating is, oui, merci. Okay, next up, the order of courses in France. Dessert is generally only ordered following the main meal, although sometimes with set menus, the server will ask you for your choice during the initial ordering process. Remember that cheese comes before dessert, or is sometimes listed as a dessert itself. It's not usually eaten prior to the main course, just so you know. The French would find it odd to eat cheese before having the main course or even before the appetizer. Coffee is also generally enjoyed following the meal, during or after dessert. It's considered odd in France to order coffee or sweet soda drinks during or before a meal, at least in sit-down restaurants. Fast food joints, of course, are exceptions. In more traditional restaurants, stick with sparkling or still water and or wine. Okay, so how do you ask for the bill or check? Remember that most servers in France will wait for you to ask for the bill, even long after you've finished dessert. This is considered polite in France. The server will almost never come up and give you the bill without your asking for it. So don't sit around waiting for them to come give it to you. In their minds, it would be impolite, as if they're suggesting that you leave the restaurant, and this is simply not done in France in the vast majority of places. If you need to get the check or the bill right away, you can say, Excusez-moi, l'addition s'il vous plaît which means, excuse me, can I please have the bill? Or you can also just say, excusez-moi, and make a gesture to the server from across the room that you'd like the check. It's sort of the scribbling pen on paper gesture. But I'd avoid doing this in more formal restaurants if you can help it. It's best to say, excusez-moi, l'addition s'il vous plaît. Okay, so next, there's the whole question of tipping in France, which again, we, I could probably make a whole video on separately, uh, the etiquette of tipping, but I'm just going to say sh briefly that tipping culture in France is a little less cut and dry than it is in the US and certain other countries. So if the service is good to excellent, you may choose to tip servers around five to 10% of the total bill. Now there's an automatic service charge of 15% that's going to be added to your bill, but you have to understand that this rarely ends up as tips for servers. They instead receive a monthly salary that's typically more generous than the earnings of counterparts in North America. So where your average server in North America might be making two or three dollars an hour in wages and then most of what they earn is in tips, that's not really true in France. The servers will make not a super generous, but a more generous monthly salary that's more stable and tips are not considered nearly as much part of their earnings. But while tips are not an obligation in France, many or most diners would leave an additional 5 to 10% for a service that is good or exceptional. It's still more common to use cash because many card machines in France don't have an add tip option. This might be surprising, I know, coming from North America where tipping has become such a culture in its own right. Some argue that the 15% service charge in restaurants in France is enough, and it's true that leaving a pour boire, which is the word for tip in French, is again not an obligation as it is in the US and elsewhere. Still, I believe that leaving at least 5-10% to for good to exceptional service is the right thing to do, especially since contrary to popular belief, servers rarely receive the 15% service charge on top of their salary. One exception to the tipping rule is when you have just a cup of coffee or glass of wine in a cafe or bar. In these cases, tips are not generally necessary. Feel free to leave some pocket change or round up to the next euro in these cases. Tips are also not generally given in fast food or takeaway restaurants. Well, that's about it for now. If you're interested in learning even more about the fine points of etiquette in France, make sure to visit our full article at Paris Unlocked. Just search for etiquette in the search box at the website. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to our channel for more Paris and France-related travel tips and inspiration. Bon voyage!